Is there? Is there? We are live. Okay. And in the chat. Also should have a link. Um, Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hello. Hello, everyone that's not here yet because you don't have a link to get here. Oh, no. We're working it on it. Imagine there's dramatic credit music playing at this time. There is a tab called Google Effects. I don't know what it does, but we could try and utilize it. That's maybe terrifying. It's, maybe it summons Kevin. Maybe, could, maybe it could be like a morning morning radio show where we can throw in things like dogs barking and scrat record scratches. Why do you know what I would use it for? It would be burps and farts. Yes, <laughs> and nothing but. Okay. I still have no link. Okay, nope. give me just a second. You can do this. You got, got this. this. Home slice. If it's popped up, throw it in the chat. The G chat, yeah. Not okay. G chat. Yeah, there's um a chat button on the top left that you can click oh, on that, it. and it'll open. There's the link. I, I just tweeted it. it. I posted it to Facebook. I okay. see it. And at least one person is watching live oh. right now. Where do we and see if you're that? not watching live right now, you may see this later because it's going on YouTube. So yeah, hi. Yeah. Excellent. We we are the Damsels of Dorkington. Hello. I'm Blythe. I'm Rissy. And I'm Jeff. And our very special guest today is Keith Baker. Hi. Say hi, Keith. Hi. How is everyone? Um, Keith I'm is doing well. most notably the creator of Eberron, but he also has some other games that he's working on right now. Yay! Yay! So we brought him on to talk about all those cool things. And, um, and here I am. Here what? he is. And oh, sorry. If you're watching this live, we do have a chat, or you can comment. And, and if you're not watching this live, too bad, fuckers. Yeah, you should have watched it live, Jack Wagon. A what, black yes. in hell. Eat an entire bowl of phalluses, my mm -hmm. pod-defecating pieces of shit. Ha! We're doing hard defecating, like, as in, like, the nasty black brick shits that you get Correct. from being outdoors too much. Totally. I'm, yeah, I'm sure that's only that you. You should write that into Eberron as well. It's in there. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess I haven't read that supplement yet about the black bridge. No, shit. no. It, it, you know, but it, it, it comes up. Oh, okay. Well, There's a one supplement. of those unpublished novels. <laughs> oh. Okay. The fan fiction. Been, exactly. Oh, yes. You don't want to see all the Eberron slash fiction that's out there. Oh. Is that true? Warforged, you know. Right. Uh, well, no, but uh, oh, there are oh. some disturbing Warforged pictures I've seen. <laughs> Big old dicks. Ask, ask Logan Bonner. Rissy and I, uh, we once had a discussion about Whoreforged. Yes, yes we I, did. I recall Instead that coming yeah, up we back told, we told yes. a year yes. ago. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It was good times. That's true. So uh, make that happen. I want to see more It seems like making a mechanical vagina would be a lot harder than a mechanical dick. Because it could squeeze too hard. Would it really be harder? I'm not going anywhere near that. <laughs> I wouldn't either. Yeah, I think that... Off. Yeah, we're all trying to get the uh, the techniques of a mechanical vagina and mechanical penis. Penis. I mean, the most people That's have right need a lot of lube. socks into their flashlights with plenty of lube. I'm just saying, mm, I think it's yeah. not going to match to the changelings. The changelings still uh, have the, the brothel industry all tied up. I so could see that. Fair mm. enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. So, Keith, what, um, what games do you have out right now? Uh, so, out right now, uh, you know, you got your Eberron. You got uh, Gloom. Yes. And have here, which is of course the game where you have a family that you want to suffer miserably and die, uh, while keeping your opponents happy, healthy, and alive. And last year we came out with Cthulhu Gloom. Yay! Um, Ta-da, Cthulhu Yay. Gloom. 
uh, which is same idea, but of course you want the people to go insane before they die. Um, right. And read mystic tomes and shit. Exactly. It's only fair. And name their cats the really racist things. <laughs> there is that. We actually have a cat in the game as one of the characters called Tigger Man. Ah! Uh, some people have it's true. Said that that's not far enough, uh, you know, but that, you have to have a cat in this. Uh, you do, and it has to be named something that's as close to the original and horrifically uh, offensively named uh, cat as possible. Well done, Keith. I played that. Uh, and I will say that uh, Cthulhu Gloom is up for an Origins Award this very weekend. So well done, sir. No one well done. Fingers crossed. Congratulations. Uh, meanwhile, later in this year, I have Cthulhu Flux. Uh, coming out. June, 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 June. Shit, man. Which is awesome. That's totally cool. awesome. I'm uh, super excited about Cthulhu Flux. It, it is bizarrely one of the, the most, well, the most strategic Fluxes that exists, because Flux is not really a game noted for strategy, and Cthulhu Flux, it, uh, it works in a little more. Strategery. Strategery, Strategery. indeed. Secrets Flux players were not meant to know. Ha! Oh no, non-Euclidean cards and whatnot. Exactly. But I'm really happy with Cthulhu Flux. I'm uh, really looking forward. To When's the release date? Uh, August. August. So by That's packs, in time for my birthday, everyone. Who's yay! Really? August is when my birthday happens. Your birthday is in August. It is, and Cthulhu Flux is in August with my birthday. That's so Wait weird. Wait a second. That's so serendipitously coincidental, Del Del Del. Herp your derps in the corner. What? I like to herp all of the derps. Herp all the derps! <laughs> you oh, dumb. Lord. You dumb. So beyond that, I'm working on uh, a sequel, you know, expansion for Cthulhu Gloom. Are you? Do you tell Already? Yes. Uh, this is exclusive. This is exclusive. Exclusive. Uh, exclusive. <laughs> the, uh, the base set, one of the things we left out were, uh, well, I say we as if there was a whole team of us working on it. Hundreds. One of the things I left out uh, was the Dreamlands and a lot of the sort of weirder, uh, more fantastical stuff and sort of decided at the start, save that for an expansion. Oh, nice. So we'll work that in. That's awesome. So a lot of his earlier writings then, the stuff about dreams and, and whatnot. Is, <laughs> now, is that an effect? Well, wow, these are, these are impressive. <laughs> I just discovered the Google effect. Oh, no. Wow. Oh, Christ. You're a cat with a monocle, Rissy. <laughs> like a sir. <laughs> that, oh that's potential. You are so damn classy. <laughs> uh. <laughs> um. <laughs> So, Keith, I'm going to throw a question at you. What do you think about a role-playing game where, that's set at Miskatonic University in, like, the 1920s or 30s? And the point being, like, it just became co-ed, um, and, of course, there's unspeakable tomes, and, uh, you know, in the college libraries and that kind of thing. Like, what would you think of a game like that, and can you help make it happen? Because I think it would be awesome. <laughs> so, so, first, I'll say I'm just so jealous of your cat with a monocle-ness. I'm, I'm, like, tempted to, uh, you know, fix myself up here. But, uh, yes, everyone oh, uh -oh. No. Are, no, are we we still do it. No. Are we still Oh, we're back. Okay. Yeah, okay. you're here. So, I'll just say I like the idea. So, even within Eberron, uh, something that's been on the back burner, and I know at least one person has done it, was to uh, run a campaign set at one of the universities. Oh, nice. That's and great. And in fact, the, the playtest I was doing for D&D Next uh, was centered around a university, and one of the characters is a professor, and, you know, uh, someone else is just, like, hangs out at the local bar and stuff of like course. that. Of course. The townie? We play for that. The townie. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, I can county. I can annoy anyone. I will, I will also say that I have thought about um, always having the back burner for a long time a gloom role playing game. Ooh. And so I'm just saying, if one got the gloom role playing game off the the ground, I think the Cthulhu gloom role playing version would be would be perfectly ideal for something like that. Oh, I think absolutely. Uh, like it might make a, a cool role-playing expansion uh, for the the Call of Cthulhu game, like as it exists. There's a. Have you ever heard of the game? Uh, My life with Master. 
I have not. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. It's not exactly like Gloom, but it has certain elements that that are similar. So I think there's you know at least, uh, and it got pretty good reviews. So there's oh, kind absolutely. of a market for that. So yeah, I I would love to see Gloom brought to life as an RPG. The the trick I've always seen with actual Call of Cthulhu uh, is it's how you bring a sense of suspense to a game uh, when people know they are playing a horror game. You know, so they know there's something strange is going to happen and, you know, they'll go insane or they'll be whatever. It's, it's how do you make that truly, you know, as scary as reading a book or uh, things like that. I think Dread, uh, are you familiar with the role-playing game Dread? Oh, yes. yes. We have it on our shelf right behind us. Oh. Right over there. Dread is, Dread is quite clever in that instead of dice, it uses a Jenga tower. Ooh. Uh, and basically, whenever you have to do something challenging, you have to draw a certain number of Jenga tiles. And if the tower falls, you die. Wow. And so this helps because the, the longer the game goes on, the more dangerous things get. Well, it generates right. genuine suspense. Right. And because drawing a tile with your life depending on it, is very different from rolling a die where it is just totally random. You know, there's, there's nothing you can do uh, to sort of influence it one way or another. Whereas drawing the tile, it's you. If you screw this up, you know, right. yeah. no oh, one to blame but yourself. Well, one nice thing about horror games and whatnot I've found is that usually if people are coming to it, like they're ready to be scared. For the same reason people go to horror movies. Oh. You know, they, and they enjoy what? it. Like, there's nothing like a night spent playing Ravenloft with candles. <sighs> well, with candles, see, there you go, set in the atmosphere. And i got to say, you need to get a monocle. Because I really do. Does I really do. <laughs> I'm going I'm to get me a monocle. <laughs> but see, I love, how, I love how serious and professional you're being, but you look like a fucking cat. <laughs> Every time you come up, I just, I start giggling all over again. <laughs> I had no idea this was available. It's like the best thing ever. It well, is I pretty know. cool. It is pretty cool. <laughs> but I will say that my favorite game I ran, I mean, I've, I've had a lot of different suspenseful games that worked fine, but the favorite one I had uh, was a game where I actually told everyone we were going to play a cyberpunk superhero game Ooh, that was sort okay. of be a sort of Judge Dreddy type thing. All and right. it was uh, hero system, you know, make your 200-point character. They all did. They all figured, oh, we're going to fight master villains and things like that. No, it was totally a Cthulhu horror game. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that like the okay, well done. Well destroyed done. Destroyed by supernatural horrors. And, of course, the key was I had to know the players would enjoy that. But as it was, it was like, yeah, all your guns and stuff, they're utterly useless. You know, the things that are happening are completely on a scale you're just not prepared to deal with. And so it meant they were really essentially in suspense because it just wasn't, they didn't know what to expect. Oh, yeah. That, that's yeah. probably not one you could throw it in an inexperienced group, but yeah, as you said, not if you did know your players well, I, I can see that being really enjoyable. Right. I mean, again, I, yeah. you have to know they're going to buy in. Yeah. yeah, I love right. that idea. That's brilliant. They, they've tweaked their characters to make sure that they're able to take care of these big, bad supervillains. Right. Exactly. Not Nyarlathotep ripping off yeah. their head. Right, much like uh, in a, any kind of a horror fiction, you would have a group of completely unprepared people. So right. I like that you were able to convey that, and they never even were the wiser until well, yeah. they started dropping so, dead and going mad. So, so like, good on you. Uh, one of the creatures in the game was a, a thing that basically pulled you out of time. Ooh. And just, it, it basically, as long as it was paying attention to you, it pulled you into its time frame. Uh, so to everyone else, you would just like basically be devoured in an instant, and they wouldn't know what happened. Uh, hey. But it also meant, because it was just focused on you, that like guns and other technological stuff wouldn't work at all. Oh, so again, no. you have your super gunslinger guy who suddenly, pop, you know, everyone freezes. And of course, just has to watch him fighting this thing. Oh, and wow. all his like super gun stuff just doesn't work at all, and he has to figure out, what the heck do I do? Um, oh. And it was a lot of fun. That that does sound great. So anyhow. So actually, Heath, what are you are, are you playing in any games right now? Uh, so I am not playing in anything right now. I have been doing. Uh, I was running a D and D Next playtest for a little while. Part of it is because I've been moving around, and so it's hard to to get a static group. Um, 
I still, of course, you know, have the game that I travel around and run for people wherever I go, which I still want to get out and run for you guys sometime. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. I, I want to play it. Uh, so that's not an ongoing game, but it's a game that I've run 56 times. So yeah. it's a game that is always interesting to me to see how it turns out with every new group. Um, before I moved down here to Texas, I was in a game of Exalted that lasted for a year and that was, in fact, set at a school. That's uh, fantastic. So speaking of, of the, the co-ed Miskatonic uh, story, it was something sort of like that, except that along the way you end up, you know, it's a school filled with crazy anime, you know, nuttiness. Right, <laughs> lunars and solars and shit. Exactly. But uh, the captain of the swim team is an infernal, and he is such an asshole. That's awesome. <laughs> and then he has a swim fan, just like that shitty movie no one saw. I <laughs> mean swim fan? Yes, I mean swim fan. <laughs> so, Keith, um, tell us about Cthulhu Gloom, since that's the one that's out right now. I, I, Gloom is a very, uh, it's a complex game. Yes. But can you give us kind of a short rundown on, on oh, how it works. And I mean, it's not actually tremendously complex. I mean, basically, uh, the gist of it, in fact, oh, dang, don't have uh, one open I could just pull out. The gist of it <laughs> is that you have a character, um, and well, you have five characters, you know, a family. And most of the deck are uh, transparent cards that you overlay on top of the character. Which I think is pretty brilliant. That I've not seen that in a card game before. And, and the idea is that it's like telling a story. So that basically a card might say, you know, so I have a character. My character's name is Melissa. And I have cards in my hand that say, you know, was trapped on a train. And so I play it on her, and it's Melissa was trapped on a train. And, of course, the fun of the game is me coming up with how would she come to be trapped on a train? Why was she on a train? Where is she going? How was she trapped? Uh, and this will set negative points on her. And I'll say she was trapped on a train and cursed by the queen because, well, you know, she got into the first class cabin and that wasn't supposed to happen. And uh, if you don't stop me, I will have her die horribly because at this point she will have built up some negative points. But you could come along and have something nice happen to her and say, and on that train, it turns out that the conductors of trains can marry people like the captains of ships, and she was married <laughs> magnificently. And that will cover over her negative scores, and now she's happy and can't be killed. Mm -hmm. And that's the very basic level of it is, you know, I'm trying to make folks unhappy. You're trying to make them happy. Uh, and the game ends when someone's family is killed. What adds a little tactical nuttiness to it is that cards also have effect and the cards that give those negative points that you want are bad things. It's not good to be, you know, plagued by the pox or disturbed by dysentery or you. distressed by dysentery. <laughs> uh, you know, so these will, like, reduce your hand size or make you discard cards or things like that. Uh, whereas the good cards, when you get married, you get cards, you get presents. Yay! Um, cards. So there are times... Presents when you'll want to play a card on, say, an opponent because you want to do the negative effect to them, even though it also gives them negative points and vice versa. Oh. So, like I say, that's where some strategy comes in. Um, yeah, like that. I also have some well, big cool. things in the work uh, later in the year. I have a really big role-playing and fiction project that I will be talking about more in the next couple of months. Uh, you know, it's still in the early phases, but it's something I'm really excited about. Uh, where can people go to find out information as you're releasing it over the next couple months? So I'm on Twitter as uh, at HellCowKeith, so H-E-L-L-C-O-W-K-E-I-T-H. Uh, and my website at the moment is BossyTheCow.com uh, backslash H-D-W-T, Have Dice Will Travel. And that's certainly, I'm currently posting uh, some Eberron question and answer stuff there on a weekly basis. And I'll certainly just be continuing to post stuff about the latest news on whatever I'm working on. Very cool. Um, 
Now, you are not going to be at Gen Con, is that correct? I am not going to be at Gen Con. I oh, am yeah. going to be at PAX. Uh, and, of course, I would just say PAX. Well, see, Gen Con is where I think uh, Kazuga Flux will be released. Okay. I just can't make it this year. Mm. Uh, but you can, you can have a copy before I do. You can, like, gloat about it. Yeah. And I promise you, we will. Oh, That's yeah. fair. Yeah. I will be, <laughs> be gloating. Sleep on them like smog. Uh, but there will also be, like, big Cthulhu flux happenings at PAX. And uh, I don't yet know if I'm going to make it to San Diego Comic-Con or not. I'm exploring that as a possibility. Blythe and Jeff, are you guys going to PAX this year? We Tickets. are going to PAX. Tickets have been purchased, which Hooray! means that, that was the hard part because they sold out in, like, four hours. Oh, my God. It was yeah. crazy. It was. It, it had some uh, San Diego going on. Yeah, uh, people thought that they had days and weeks to to buy tickets, and all the three-day passes were gone in like four hours. And then, uh, I believe by 48 hours from that, all of the one-day passes were gone as well. So that is that is actually, frankly, my issue with with Comic Con is I've looked at it and said, hmm, right. I might actually yeah. go, but at this point, because I didn't plan on going beforehand, it's way too late to apply as a guest, and you know, way too late to, to get a regular bat. So I'm like, hmm. But we'll see. It's time to show up with a bat and uh, find a dark alley. No, I just, I just show up and say, I made Eberron. <laughs> yes. You see just, this bitch? You see this? Right exactly. there. Just start screaming, do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? <laughs> so say, you're not Edward James almost. That's all... <laughs> no, sorry. Back wow. to the line, sir. Or even his clone, as we've encountered his clone on at least a couple of occasions. That's, yeah, true. Well, that's true. That is, yeah. He there are pictures in Texas. With the his cosplay doppelganger, it's uncanny. Hmm. Edward James almost is what you're saying? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that was incredible. That's right. That gets a round of applause. Yes. Well, do, well done, so sir. Oh, yes. that's friggin' amazing. <laughs> Edward James Almost. Somebody register oh. that domain before it gets taken. It's too good. <laughs> too good. And then lord it over him. Say, like, I'll give it to you for a prize. Yes. That's hilarious. I love it. <laughs> and the prize would okay. be you have to follow me around and say, so, sh so say we all, all of the time. There you go. Well, I'm still curious about the, uh, the damsels of Dorkington Mart, because, as I said, I used to write, uh, you know, part of my college thesis was a live role-playing game. Ooh. I've done, like, a bunch of different live role-playing games. What and program so, you know, were you in? Hmm? What, uh, what, like, program were you in? Where did you go to school? Oh, I, I went to uh, Bates College in Maine. It wasn't, like, any kind of special game design program. It was creative writing, and oh, I was okay. just, like, wanting to do it on, you know, interactive literature and stuff like that. So I managed to convince them that this was a thing and that they should not do it. <laughs> That's fantastic. There you go. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, we're um, we're planning our LARP temple. Well, um, tentatively. Tentatively, yeah. Tentatively, it's September, but we haven't picked an exact date yet. We have photo shoots that we're trying to get sorted out first. So correct. No. That's the plan. We want it. We wanted to do it sooner, but it's going to be so hot. So yeah. so we're waiting until September, and we also want to give people a chance. A lot of people have expressed interest in coming, like out of state to mm -hmm. participate with us. Mm -hmm. So we want to give them plenty of time. So we'll be choosing a date on that pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited. Oh, it's going to be good. Um, yeah, I have to have time to make my boffer weapons. Lightning bolt! Yeah, speaking go. of weapons, I'll be right back. Okay. Oh, oh you're my gonna, God. Oh, she's going to show it. Uh, I was getting ready to show it. Oh, oh wow. I used to, I'll mm. probably just make a bunch of duct tape balls and be a spellcaster. So what Blythe is getting ready to bring in uh, was created by one of our fans. Uh, and it is epic before epic was epic. And I'm going to allow her to, to right. show it off. Oh the hammer God. is not my penis. No, Just the hammer is not that. my penis. Okay, okay. Oh, my right. God, wow. Blythe. Do you see this, you guys? Yeah, That's incredible. Talk so, that, so that you show up in the center. Let me get a little bit closer oh, now. Oh my fucking it. god! That it's would be the hammer of Dorkington logo. Wow. Now yeah. I'm going to show you this. Hold. I'm going to show nice. you this, and then 
I don't know if it's backwards. Oh, no, 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 you can no. read it. Just, just keep talking, Blythe. Okay, and, excellent. And I'm going to keep talking so that I stay on the screen. Okay. And everyone can read it. And can you guys see what it says at the bottom? I don't think you can. No. Uh, I've got down to the power of. That's as yeah. far as I the can The power see. of. I, it I, is I, the power of. Dark Ride. Ride. That's, That's amazing. amazing. <laughs> So awesome. And if you notice, there's some very um, there's some very good details here. At the base, we have a red, a black, a green, and a purple jewel. Oh yes. my God! That's ah, delightful. this is my mighty ban hammer. Oh, <laughs> ban hammer! Ah, I will ban all of you bitches. <laughs> She's ban to all of the bitches. All the bitches. <laughs> my God! So that came in the mail today. So oh my! This that's is, fantastic. Yes. Perfect, perfect timing. That US is Postal quite impressive. Service. Is all I'm saying. I still. Oh no! Oh she. We'll I never know. know. We'll never know. He's come back. He's no. I think we've lost Keith, you guys. I at think we broke him. At least he looks so peaceful and serene in his little square. <laughs> I cannot <laughs> believe that shit just happened like a soap opera, like where the lights go out right before they're going to reveal who was the murderer. What the fuck, man? What the fuck? <laughs> it was Keith in the kitchen with the, the bad hammer. <laughs> Yulmir. <laughs> wow. I'm so sad. He's gone. Oh, yeah. He's gone. Let's try He's to get gone. him back in. Can you get him back in? Oh, wow. Uh, or we can, uh, yeah, I can try. Yeah, let's try to get him back in. It's Just so he can say his goodbyes and shit. Yes. And shit. And yes. It's very important. Shit. That he gets to shit on camera. Because I promised Keith, I said, Keith, you can, you can come. We would love to promote your stuff, but you're going to have to shit. Yes. That's right. Ah, shit. How many, how many people are watching? I, I haven't even, I don't even have it listed. I um, it's, it's dropped down to like six. Oh, I see six, but yes. I think we're having some major problems because I can't even invite Keith back. So we may have to go ahead and call this good enough. Good and then we'll have Keith enough. back. Well, Keith, we'll be back later on this year. Hooray! So, so worry not, people. Do I pop up in the little, in the little thing when I talk? Can you... Can you, you do. Oh, Keith, do Keith I? is back. I'm Keith back. back. Oh, he's back. Yay! I, I figured yeah. I might be too late and that it all no. might have closed. I, you know, it's the internet. And you're not a cat anymore. You're just no, I... Uh... Now she's just a classy lady. Yes. Oh, there you go. With a top hat. With a top hat. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> and see, now for a moment there, I thought the hammer was actually uh, just another Google effect. No. <laughs> no, the hammer is now my penis. There you go. Awesome. Very penis. nice. Penis. So we'd love to have you back, Keith, uh, later on this year, whenever you've got your, uh, your, your super secret special project rolling out. Yes. Excellent. And when I have figured out Google Effects, just so I can, <laughs> you know, match up here. In space! <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. And like I say, uh, absolutely. When I've when I've got the the super secret stuff to talk about. Yay! Yeah. Well, it's always a pleasure, Keith Baker. And we will see you at PAX to play some uh, Cthulhu Flux. And, and we'll continue against playing. Humanity. And Cards Against Humanity. Dear God, yes. We're going to keep playing yeah. Cthulhu Gloom until we're at a place where we're almost as good as you, so that we could maybe beat you. But I'm not seeing. Oh, that. good luck with that. Yeah, Don't I know. forget all of you on the internet to follow him at HellCowKeith on Twitter. That's truth. HellCowKeith. And uh, buy his awesome product. Yeah! Thank you very much. Buy his product! <laughs> <laughs> I think Blythe has regressed to a previous evolutionary uh, state. Oh, because you can judge. You're a monocled freak inside of a space helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. I'm in the future. I'm the only one here I'm that's normal. <laughs> uh, I beg to differ. Yeah. <laughs> have you met you? <laughs> well, do you have any closing thoughts, Keith, before we close this internet fandango? If you can't say something nice, say something surreal. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Put that on a hammer. Put that on a hammer. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Have a good night. You too. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, us. Mr. Baker. Thank you, Keith. Good night, everybody. Night. Till next time. In, in a week. space. <laughs> yeah, in a week. We'll be here again. This is going to be a regular thing. Get over it. Yeah. Come on. With special guests and shit. Yeah. Okay, bye. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye, everybody.